Hello, this is Jeff Rice introducing our latest core report, G1050 Core Giving Records. Now this report is designed to show you giving records in a lot of different ways. Uh, you can choose what you're going to see, you can choose how it's going to be summarized. We have three level of summarizations on this report and so it should give you a lot of ability to twist and turn your giving records and summarize it in many different ways uh, all in one report. We're going to start by looking at the filters on this report and when we do the first option we see on the filter list is what date we're going to look at. Do we want to return this based on the received date or the created date that the transaction was entered into the system? Of course the created date uh, may be several days shifted from when the received date was but when you're trying to do reconciliation and figure out which transactions go with what amounts on a bank statement, created date can be more accurate or at least more predictive of what transactions are in the amount in the bank statement than received date can be. When we have the time period, you have your relative time selections, like uh, typical we see on these types of reports. And then the time selection will show you uh, which batches apply to that particular time period. So therefore, you can only return the transactions on a certain batch if you so desire. Or you can say, do not filter. Coming on down, how do you want to see this information? We start by looking at your page break options. The page sheet break option allows you to control on what value change is it going to create a new sheet in Excel a change in the activity, a change in the batch, uh, one sheet for check, one for cash, one for credit card, one for each change in the fund, and so forth. So you have all these different options that allow you to control how many different sheets are going to be produced. After you made your selection there, then we have subgroup with subtotal on, which allows you to control how you're going to see your data subtotal on the same sheet. Do I want to see a subtotal section for each change in activity, each change in batch, check, cash, credit card, a lot of the same options we had in the the page sheet break you have here in the subtotals, which then gives you a total and some metrics totals for each one of these sections, including changes in received date and so forth. Now we move to the giving fields to display. This thing will allow you to control for each giving transaction what fields do I want to see on the output. And furthermore, what it'll do is going to automatically summarize based on the giving field that you choose to display. So for example, if I choose nothing, then I'm going to get one row with one amount and that's it. It'll show you the amount of giving that occurred in the time period we selected above. That's all it's going to do. If you want to see more differentiation, you choose a field here. So let's say I chose batch name. Then that's going to give you one row for every batch that occurred within the time period and how much was given to each batch. If I further said, well, I want batch and I want uh, check, cash, or credit card, then I'm going to get one row for every combination of batch and check, batch, cash, batch, credit card that occurred in the time period in question. So what it's doing is automatically rolling up the amount given to fit whatever detail you're choosing here in the fields to display. The more fields you display, the more uh, differentiation you're going to have in your output. And we're going to show some of those uh, selections when you move forward here, show you some examples of that. Next we have the summary fields to display. So, so then for every line on the report you can choose to see how many contributors gave in that particular line, how many giving units. Now a giving unit in this terminology is a household or an organization that's a family or a business that gave to your church. A contributor is the individuals that gave, the household that gave, or the organization that gave. The number of transactions on that line. So if I have one line that's for a batch and I say number of transactions in my summary, then that's going to show me how many transactions are actually in that batch. We also have then average dollars given per contributor, per giving unit, and per transaction on that line if we choose to display that. We have different sort options here. Include, by default is the amount, last name, first name, received date, received date, so forth. And that's the basics of this report. You also have additional filters down here, which we can do a lot more control. Uh, I want to filter the transactions themselves uh, greater than, equal to, or less than this amount. Now, this isn't rolled up summary. This is actual transaction, individual transaction amounts filtering. Uh, I want to filter by specific giving sources. Show me those transactions that only came from credit card batches, that came from a conversion, that came from the online website, that came from the portal, or a kiosk, or the contributions app, or whatever. How do want, which ones of those do I want to see? Which specific giving types do I want to see? ACS, check, credit card, non-cash, voucher. Entered by who if I'm doing some sort of auditing? Which user entered these transactions? I only want to see those. Uh, show me ones that are from specific funds and sub-funds. By default, you get them all for the time period, whether they're inactive or not. So we have all your fund selections here, you have your sub-fund selections, and you have your fund types. 
How about specific pledges? Get, show me transactions given to a specific pledge, a pledge drive, and which ones are those? How about contributions given by certain people? I can uh, do a little name search here and say, show me all the giving unit candidates named Smith, and then I can pick some of those and uh, select specific givers. Coming on down, specific status selections. Then I have the display field formatting, including the household name selections, the individual name selections, address names, and then finally tent group instructions uh, if I'm producing a temporary group. So all of these filters should give you a lot of control over what you want to see in terms of raw data returned. So next we're going to take a look at some of the example outputs I have for this report and we're going to see what those look like.